Hello, I hope you're well. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a festive TBR. I am super excited to be participating in not one, but two holiday themed readathons. The first is The 12 Days of Bookmas by M at Bookish Potatoes and Catherine over at Catherine Zoffre. I am so sorry if I'm pronouncing your last name incorrectly. And also a Bookworms New Year's readathon, which is hosted by a bevy of booktubers, including Noelle at Noelle Seven Pages, Lizzie at Literary Lizzie, David at David's Book Reviews, and Mindy at Mindy's Book Journey. So yeah, that is everyone who is hosting these readathons. I'm going to put their channel links in the description box for you below, so check that out. But why don't we just dive right in? The first of these really festive readathons is 12 Days of Bookmas, which as I mentioned is hosted by M and Catherine, and it runs from December 26 through January 6, and it's like the sweet spot for me because I'm off for two weeks. All of the prompts are inspired by the 12 Days of Christmas Christmas Carol, which I thought was really cute and fun. I selected books that basically cover multiple prompts. The first book that I want to talk about though is The Cellist of Sarajevo by Stephen Galloway, and for this it's the 12 Drummers Drumming Prompt, which is a book with music in it. Three French Hens read a book that takes place in another country, and Two Turtle Doves read a book with a dual POV or multiple POVs. And so I think this is pretty self-explanatory as to how it covers the first prompt about drummers drumming, the cellist, Sarajevo is in Bosnia, Herzegovina, and then the book I actually believe is from the perspective of four individuals. So as long as that one pans out, we're good. The book itself is set during the Bosnian War, which was taking place during the early 1990s. This is historical fiction, but it's far more modern than most of the historical fiction I read. Um, from what I gather, it's about the conflict, but it's also about the people living through the conflict itself. I remember reading a YA book when I was in elementary school. I was probably 10 or 11, and it was also on this same war, the Bosnian War. That book, which I believe was called Zalta's Diary, has been on my mind and has remained ingrained in my brain for decades at this point. So I am looking forward to revisiting this particular point in history from a more adult and mature context with a more adult and mature book. The next book that I'm planning to read is this guy. <laughs> This is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Swab, which I don't think needs any introductions. This book is literally everywhere. I am late to the bandwagon per usual and honestly have never read a book by V.E. Swab or Victoria Swab. Don't really know much about her and don't really know a ton about the book itself either. The prompts that this book is going to cover I'm using it for nine ladies dancing, read a book with a female protagonist, and five golden rings, read a book with gold on the cover. From what I understand, it's about Addie LaRue, who lives forever because she made this sort of Faustian bargain, and the deal is that no one remembers her and then suddenly someone does. Um, so it is a bit of historical fiction and a bit of fantasy kind of wrapped into one. I've heard pretty good things about this, so I'm looking forward to it, even if it's not necessarily in my usual wheelhouse. Okay, so the next book is one that has already appeared on my channel in my winter TBR. It is Sealskin by Sue Bristow, and I'm using this for the prompt Seven Swans a Swimming, which is to read a book that takes place on or near the water. And this is a book that is about a Scotsman named Donald who 
marries a selkie, which is a mythological creature who is part seal and part woman. Basically, they live their lives as seals, except for one night a year when they come ashore, remove their seal skins, and are transformed into beautiful women or something of that sort. Since one of the supporting or even main characters in this book is part seal, and I believe this takes place on an island, it definitely fits the bill, and I'm also excited to potentially get to kill two birds with one stone, checking this off my winter TBR and also using it for this prompt here. The next book that I'm planning to read for the 12 Days of Bookmas is Pachenko by Min Jin Lee, and I don't have a copy of that of it because I'm planning to listen to it as an audiobook, which is one of the prompts. Eleven Pipers Piping is to listen to an audiobook, and it also covers the prompt Ten Lords Leaping, which is to read a historical fiction, which to be honest is probably the easiest prompt for me to complete because I read so much historical fiction. I feel like I've heard so much about this book, especially over the last year, two years since it came out. It's one of those that I feel like everyone who's read it thinks really highly of it. I like the fact that it is a historical fiction that is not set in Europe for a change. I do tend to focus very heavily on Europe and this one is set in Asia, in Korea and Japan specifically. So I don't know a ton about the book um, plot-wise except I believe that Sunja, the main character, unfortunately falls in love with a man who is married, which I don't believe she knows at the time, but becomes pregnant and ends up marrying a another man and moving to Japan. From what I gather, it is a multi-generational story. It is also rather large. I think it's around 500 pages, but like I said, basically everyone who I've heard has read it has really enjoyed it, so I'm looking forward to taking a crack at it. I think it's like an 18 hour long audiobook or something like that, so it is definitely going to be a commitment. I think those are the books that I'm reading for this particular readathon. There are some situational prompts, as I think I mentioned already in this video, Eight Maids of Milking, which is to read a book while drinking a holiday beverage, and Six Geese A-Laying, which is to read while lying down. I tend to be a morning reader, so the first thing I do in the morning is lay in bed and read a book, so that takes care of that. I also tend to read in the morning with a lovely cup of hot cocoa, which I might add a candy cane to for this particular prompt, so we got that done and dusted too. And then Four Calling Birds is to read during a live stream, which there are several to choose from for this readathon. So I will certainly tune in and do that. Any who's in, let's move on to the next readathon in this TBR, which is a Bookworms New Year's readathon. And it is a readathon that takes place during the entire month of January. There are nine prompts, which the hosts have put into a lovely bingo card, and I am a sucker for a readathon bingo card, so I'll put that on the screen for you. But this is just a really fun way of kind of getting my head into gear for 2021. It has to be better than 2020, guys. It has to be. But let's just talk about the books instead of me rambling. And again, I'm not going in any particular order. The first book is actually a repeat from The 12 Days of Bookmas, and that is Pachenko, which I literally just spoke about two seconds ago. And I'm using this one for the a book written by a POC, and a book you meant to read in 2020. This book is written by Min Jin Lee, who is a Korean American, and also this is a book that I saw in bookstores time and time again when it first came out. I have, on the rare occasion that during this pandemic I have gone to a bookstore, I have seen it, I have held it in my hand, and then for whatever reason, Put it down. So there we have it. Okay, 
So the next book is another one that appeared on my winter TBR because I am trying to kill as many birds with as few stones as humanly possible. And that is Zarina by Ellen Elpstein. And this one is for the prompt top of the TBR and a debut. It's kind of the perfect historical fiction for me. It's set in Imperial Russia. It's about royalty. It's got intrigue and palace coups. I'm sold. But I'm just so eager to read this book. Like it, it, it's taken all sorts of self-control and restraint to not have already started reading it. But yeah, I'm just really excited to read a novelization of Catherine, not Catherine the Great, the Catherine that Catherine the Great named herself after, who was married to Peter the Great and goes to all these lengths to wrest power for herself. So it should be fascinating. And yeah, I think that's re I keep hitting my tree. I think that's really all I have to say about that one. So the next book is Sun In by Mikhail Artsebeshev. And this is for the prompt, read a favorite book from 2011. I had to do some serious thinking for this particular prompt. 2011 feels like a very long time ago. I was barely drinking age at that time, and I was also in school and a double major studying English and history, which both have a lot of reading and writing involved. So I wasn't actually doing a lot of sort of leisure recreational or recreational reading, except for during my breaks. And so that posed a problem. But this book I remember reading for one of my seminars, I believe it was with my history advisor, and it was a seminar on the Russian intelligentsia, and this was like nothing I had read by a Russian author at that point. This is a book that had sex, it had murder, and trigger warning, it had suicide, and it was just so controversial when it came out in 1905 or 1907. It's one that I've had on my shelf since then and just have never picked up again, even though I have said, yes, I should definitely reread it. So I'm really excited to get to sink my teeth into it. And I think it kind of goes with that Russian theme that I seem to be falling into of late. So I'm really excited. It's also just a really fun cover, if I do say so myself. The next book is Split Tooth by Tanya Tagak. And this is the book I'm reading for a different genre and also a 2021 reading goal. This is a book about a young Inyuk woman living in the Canadian Arctic in the 1970s. It is supposed to be a bit memoir, a bit fiction, a bit poetry, a bit folklore, kind of like the Panera kitchen sink cookie of books. And that cookie is delicious. If you've never had it, I highly recommend it. So it's a different genre for me because it is a memoir, or at least in part a memoir. And that's not something I read often. So as far as 2021 reading goals, which are coming soon, so this is a bit of a spoiler, I do want to consciously take part in the Reading Women's Challenge. And one of the prompts, I believe it's number eight, is to read a memoir by an indigenous woman. So I feel like this fits the bill. Tanya Tagak is a Inyuk woman herself and I believe is a throat singer. So I'm interested in learning a bit more about that culture, which is one that I know next to nothing about. So it should be really, really cool to get a glimpse into what it is to be an Inyuk woman in the 70s living in the Canadian Arctic. I can't imagine living in any type of Arctic, period. So there you go. The last book, for this readathon is one that I am embarrassed to say that I have not read, and that is 
All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Dower. Dower? I think it's Dower. So I am reading this for the physical book left unread the longest and also the book you're intimidated by prompts. And this book has been sitting on my nightstand for years, probably since it won the Pulitzer Prize in whatever year that was. I don't actually know. And I just haven't read it. And I don't know why. I It's not even that it's a particular, like, I mean, it's not a small book, but it's not a particularly long one. Um, and it really is the sort of book that you would think I would jump on because I read a lot of World War II historical fiction. I don't know if I'm intimidated by it because of all the hype that this book has received over the years. I don't know, but I need to tick this off my TBR finally because it has been sitting next to my bed taunting me for years. It's kind of embarrassing at this point to be quite honest. So those are the books that I plan to read for these two really festive readathons. I think it's eight books or thereabouts, which I think is pretty manageable for the next six weeks to be quite honest, especially when you take into account the fact that I am going to be curled up in bed reading, binging on Netflix, occasionally baking and sleeping for the next little bit while I decompress from one hell of a year. I want to wish you all a Merry Christmas or a Happy Holidays. Remember, if you like this video, be sure to give it thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe to my channel. Bye!